Okay, so now that we have Lucid installed and configured within our application, and we have a database for our application to actually use and work with, we're now ready to go ahead and move into creating some migrations so that we can populate some tables within our database. So migrations allow us to not only create tables, but to find what's going to be within those tables, indexes, foreign keys, and really anything else that we're gonna to need to do within our database, we can do programmatically using migrations. And the reason why this migration approach is so great is it not only allows us to alter our database in one quick blow by using TypeScript safe code, but it also gives us a sense of version history for our database changes as we make them because these migration files will exist throughout the history of our application and we'll be able to go backwards in time to look and see, okay, when was the user's table created? When did we add this column to the user's table? And things of that nature so that you can kind of roll back anything that you might need to do safely in a controlled environment. Now, the way that Adonis goes about providing migrations to us is by wrapping another library called Connex. So whenever it comes to the underlying abilities that we have within our migrations, that lies within Connex. So if you take a look here, the way that we would go about creating a table with Connex is by calling Connex schema create table. We would pass in the table name and then we would get a callback function which provides us that table name instance, which we can use to define the schema for that particular table. So we can define our IDs, our names, the types of those columns. We can populate and create it at and update it at automatically by calling a timestamps function and a number of other different things that we could do within our table. So this will look slightly different within Adonis because this connects.schema is going to be provided to us via a class instance, but the underlying capabilities are still there and live within connects. So over on this left-hand side, it's kind of small, but maybe if I zoom in here, we can see all of the different schema building options that we have within Connect. So we can drop columns, rename columns, define an increment column, integers, dates, booleans, JSON, really any column type that's applicable within SQL land, right? And since Adonis 5 uses TypeScript, we're gonna have all of these defined and easily accessible to us within our migration code base. Now, before we actually dive in and create our first migration using the ACLI, what I wanna do is quickly go over the overall schema for the database that we're gonna be creating. So at a high level here, you can see that we're gonna have a users table, tasks, project, Projects tables. And then we're going to have a couple of intermediary tables here called project users and project tasks, which essentially define which users belong to which projects and which tasks belong to which projects as well. And then outside of our database structure, we're going to have a couple of enums defined via TypeScript called role and status. So the way that we're going to go about creating this schema via migrations is by creating a single migration per table that we want to create. So we're going to have a create users migration, create tasks migration, create projects migration, create project users migration, create projects tasks migration. And then within each of those individual migrations, we would define all of the columns that we need for that particular table. So let's go ahead and dive back into our terminal here and create our users migration. So let's do node ace make migration create users table dash dash table users. So what we're doing here is we're running the make migration command and we're passing in the migration name, which is create users table. I like to name it like this so that whenever we're looking back through history of the previous migrations that we run, we can easily see in this migration, we created the users table. So I like to define kind of what I'm doing with the migration via the migration name. And then we can define what table we're creating by passing in the dash dash table command and passing in the table name that we want to create. So if we go ahead and hit enter on this, you'll see that we get back database migrations, a timestamp is applied so that we can easily go back through history of time in the order of which migrations were created. And then it passes in the migration name that we created. And then it adds into the migration file name, the name that we created the migration itself. So if we dive into our code base here and we dive into database, migrations and our create users table migration, you'll see something kind of similar to what we saw in Connects documentation. So like I said, everything's kind of wrapped inside of a class here and we're gonna have Connects available to us via this. So instead of connects.schema, it's this.schema.table. And now the particular usage of this migration here is to create a table, not necessarily just grab a table. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is nix both of these out and start from scratch with our up and down. So whenever it comes to migrations, we have two different commands that we can run. We can run our migrations and we can roll back our migrations. Whenever we run our migrations, we're essentially running this up method. So we want to create everything that we want to persist within our database. So if we're creating a table, we wanna create our table in up. If we're altering our table, we want to alter our table in up. 
And then anything that we want to be able to roll back, we want to undo within down. So if we're creating a table and up, we're going to want to delete that table and down. If we're adding a column and up, we're going to want to remove that column and down. So it kind of nicks and flows in that way so that we can go back through history and easily kind of chain together all of our migrations to get the end result of our database structure. So for our up method on our create users migration, what we're going to want to do is reach for connects via this schema dot, and then we're going to want to create table. So create table, we're going to want to pass in the table name, which we can do via this dot table name. And then we're going to have a callback function, which is given our table instance. And within here, we're going to want to define our columns for our users table. So to start with, we're going to have an ID, which is going to increment for each new record that is inserted into the table. So we're going to have table dot increments, and then we're going to pass in the column name, which in this case is ID, and we're going to flag this as our primary key. Next up, we're going to have a user's name, which is going to be a string. So we can do table dot string pass in the column name again, which is going to be username. If we wanted to for strings, we could define a max length. So this will be a max length of 50. We can flag this as needing to be unique and we can flag it as not nullable. So it is required. And we do the exact same for email, table, string, email, make this one 255, flag it as unique and not nullable as well. All right, next up we need our password. So table.string password. This will be 180 for the max length, and this one will be not nullable. And then lastly, for our authentication, we're going to need a remember me token so that if the user flags it, they want their session to be remembered. Uh, we could pass a token into here. So this will be remember me token. We'll just use the default max length for this one and flag it as nullable. Now, one thing that I left off of our schema are created at and updated at columns. I just kind of, whenever I write my schema, I just assume that that's always going to be something that I include. So the way that we're going to want to add those is just by calling table.timestamps. And that timestamps method will define that we want both a created at and an updated at column on our table. Additionally, there's also two different arguments that we could define for this timestamps table, which is use timestamp type, which would use the type of timestamp for the column values, as well as make default now. Um, we'll go ahead and just pass true for both of those so that the columns auto update and um, they're of type timestamp. Okay, so for our create users migration, this is a wrap. We have everything that we need to create our users table. Now what we need to do is define the rollback definition. So we need to define something for the down. And since we're creating our table in our up, what we want to do is delete our table in our down. So let's do this schema drop table. And then we just pass in the table name, which is this table name. And we should be all good there. So that should wrap up our create users migration. Let's go ahead and jump back into our terminal and give it a go. Node ace migration run, hit enter on that. And okay. Access denied using password. No. So it's not picking up my password uh, for whatever reason. Um, oh, gets me every time. That's not coming through as a string of root. It's coming through as that's a special character. So I just need to escape it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, let's jump back into our terminal and I'll give that another go. Let's clear out at you. Node ace migration run. And okay, there we go. So now we can see it successfully migrated our database migrations, our create users migration essentially. And one way that we can confirm this is by using a service like Tables Plus to visually see in GUI fashion what our table holds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh here. And we can see within our tables, we have an Adonis schema table and our users table right here. So if we take a look at our users table, we have the columns that we defined. If we take a look at the structure, it is using the structure that we defined. We can see the varchar has the max length defined that we passed in. Our timestamps are of type timestamp, and they're using the current timestamp value for their default values. And the only nullable value we have within our users table is remember me token. So now to give you a kind of better idea of what Adonis is doing with our migrations. If we take a look at the Adonis schema table here, you can see it's holding our migration name, a batch number, and the time that migration was run. So what it will do is whenever we run a migration, it will grab the file name out of our database migration for the file that's being run, pass it in as the name. Every time that we call run, it's going to increment the batch number. So it will grab the last batch that ran, increment that number, and the current run that's running will get that batch number. And then the time will be just whatever time the migration ran. So for example, if I were to cancel out and delete manually my users table here. And we leave this migration within our Adonis schema table. If we try to run that migration again, what Adonis will tell us is there's nothing to run here. Everything's already run. So if you manually delete your table, one thing you're going to have to do is either if you're deleting all of your tables, you can delete the Adonis schema table itself, or you're going to have to also delete the row 
for the migration that you manually undid. So in this case, if we nix out that create user schema migration and we go ahead and now we run, it will pick up that that migration has not run. That table does not exist in the table and it will create that for us. And then one more thing that I want to note here, and then we'll kind of jump forward to how to define relationships and foreign keys. If you don't define your migrations the way that I did with our users table, Adonis will kind of pick up that, hey, you're creating a table for this um, and it will automatically use the schema dot create table and it will automatically pop in the drop table for us. So for example, if we were to do node ace make migration and we just called it whatever the next table is, so tasks, and we hit enter on that, it will create a migration for us and it will just name it tasks and it will drop it into our database migrations folder. If we open this up and you'll see it kind of plops us in a better state than our user's migration did because it's just all in how I defined it. So I personally like to define my migrations by what I'm doing in that migration. If you don't do that and you just name the migration, whatever table you're wanting to create, Adonis will default the table name to the migration name and it will also pick up and add in for you that you want to create a table. It will provide you an ID, those timestamps automatically and handle the down for the drop table as well. I wanted to make that note because if that's more your cup of tea, by all means, go for it. I personally just like to name my migrations by what I'm doing in them. Okay, so now if we go ahead and jump ahead here, what I've gone ahead and done is created the remainder of the migrations that we're gonna need for our at least starting um, database structure. So we have a migration for our tasks, projects, project users, project tasks, um, and those all reside now within our database migrations folder. And then in addition to creating these migrations, I've gone ahead and populated them with some of the basic column names and types that we'll need within each individual table. So for our tasks, we have our ID, our string name, we have a description of type text, which is a much longer string type. We have a timestamp for our do at, we have a status ID integer, which is going to be defined via an enum value, uh, which is not nullable and will default that to the value of one. And then we have our timestamps. Now there's two columns that I purposefully left out of this table migration, which is created by and assigned to. These both involve defining some relationships and foreign keys. So I wanted to go through those with you. So to start with, what we'll need is just a basic table dot integer since our IDs are integer based. And then we're gonna need the column name. So created by, and then we're gonna want this to be unsigned since generally IDs, we don't want to be negative. So this will be unsigned. And then we're gonna want it to reference the column ID in the table users. And that's essentially how we define a relationship and a foreign key within connects. So we're gonna have Table of type integer, since our IDs are integers, unsigned so it can't be negative, references the column name that it's referencing in the table that we needed to reference. And then we could do the same thing for our assigned to. So it'll be table integer assigned to unsigned references. And this one's just going to reference the exact same thing. So ID in table users. So whenever we run this migration, we're going to get two different foreign keys. We're going to get one for our created by column and one for our assigned to column, both of which are related to our users table ID column. And thinking of it now, status ID should also be unsigned. Okay, so that should round out our tasks table. Now for our projects table, I've gone ahead and just completed the whole thing here since there wasn't really anything too major to go over beyond what was in the tasks table. It's basically just a subset of some of the fields. So main thing here, we have an integer with a status ID, which is unsigned, not nullable, and defaults to one. And then a text of description, a string of name, and an incrementing ID with uh, timestamps as well. Now, next up for our project tasks table, which is our intermediary table, which combines our tasks and projects to one another. I've gone ahead and left out the relationships here as well so that we can go over them. Um, this will be a little bit different because we're not just binding to a user. So we'll do table integer, since our IDs are integer based again. We're going to have a project ID for this one. This one will be unsigned as well. And it's going to reference ID in table. Whoa, it should be projects. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now we're there. Okay, and then table, integer, user ID, another unsigned references ID in table and users. So that should round out our project tasks table. Again, nothing that we haven't covered already. We have our integer with a role ID, which is unsigned, not lawable, and defaulting to type of one. Okay, and then I believe I also finished up our project users table. So we have a project ID, which is referencing to our projects ID. And then we have a user ID, which is referencing our users ID. 
our sort order, which is not nullable and defaulting to zero. We don't need to default this if we don't want to. Um, it's really up to you. Okay, so that should do it for all of our migration definitions. Now we should be able to go ahead and run our migrations. So let's go ahead, jump back into our terminal, run node ace migration run. And this should run all of the ones that have not already run. Okay, it looks like we got an error here um, for our project users table. It was not able to add the constraint for our foreign key on project ID. Uh, I did not make this unsigned. So one thing that you need to keep in mind is that the types need to match one-to-one -one with what you're referencing to. So the ID for projects is unsigned. So these references to those need to also be unsigned. So if we go ahead, save that, um, this is not transactional based. So these migrations successfully completed and ran. So these tables do exist. So we're gonna need a rollback. So let's do node ace migration rollback. A great example of why we have that command. So you can see it reverted these three here. So we no longer have our tasks, projects, tables, or project tasks, tables. Uh, a visual key, if I jump back into tables plus here, you can see we have those tables within here. If I do a quick refresh here, what it will do is it will undo those tables and I also should be getting rid of project users. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that manually, kick that out of there. Create users table is the only migration that exists. So we should be good to go. Go ahead and run node ace migration run. And there we go. Now all of the migrations successfully ran and migrated. So we should be able to jump back into tables plus here, refresh again, and see that we have all of those tables now created. And then just to visually show you, whenever we ran migration run rollback, what it will do is it will go back one batch. So you can see here, we created the users table initially, and we created that alone on its own. So it's the only table that was created in batch one. We created all four of these tables within batch two. So whenever I run node ace migration roll back, it's going to roll back the latest batch that ran. So it's going to delete all four of these tables. So for example, if I run that again, node ace migration roll back, it will delete all four of these tables. Come back in here, refresh. Now we're just back to users table. And then if we run again, we now have those four tables back. So that's essentially what that's doing. So let's say I wanted to roll all the way back to an empty database. Say I have some changes I'm making during development, need to nix the entire database. What I can do is I can run node ace migration rollback hyphen hyphen batch and define the batch number that I want to go back to. So I could pass in one to go back to one, or I could pass in zero to go all the way back to before any batches were run. So for example, if I pass in zero here, hit enter, you'll see we reverted five database tables. So if I jump back into tables plus here, refresh, we don't have any tables except for the default Adonis schema table, which tracks which migrations have run. And you'll see this is also empty as well. Okay, so let's make sure we're ending the video with our tables actually created here. So if you rolled back all the way to zero, make sure you run node ace migration run again to get all those tables back. And that should do it. That is basically all that we need to go through for migrations. If you need anything more advanced, head over to Connect's documentation and give that a look over. Again, this is really where everything that's available to us beyond this dot schema resides. And now in the next lesson, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over how to create Lucid models for these tables so that we can start to reference these tables and create records for these tables within our code base.